Well, <laughs> oh, it's early in the morning. I'm, I usually can hear this clue, but I'm not hearing good this morning. Oh, <clears throat> I'm turned on Channel 7 here. It's CBS station in Roanoke, Virginia. They're talking about, um, let's see, I've forgotten part of what she said now because really it's kind of inflammatory to me. Uh, she's talking about the First Lady coming to uh, Liberty University, which was the Jerry Falwell University, and he's deceased now. He's the one that sued Larry Flint for the parody in Hustler magazine. Okay, this they were talking to his son, who is now, I guess, head of the uh, university over here in Lynchburg, uh, Channel 7 was, and <clears throat> they were talking about First Lady uh, Melania Trump coming to speak on the Oprah. Uh, op I, excuse me, I've been through a lot of hell here, so excuse me uh, for what's going on being done to me here. Uh, opioid. She's going to be on the panel, and let me clarify this right now. I like Mrs. Trump, the First Lady. I really do. I have nothing against the lady. She's beautiful. It's Liberty University, and that bunch of thugs. Now then, Trump may get mad at me. She may get upset if they even know about me. I, I think they do. They pretty much have to. Oh, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> Channel 7, this girl that's been on here had a good job it, almost ever since I've been in Roanoke. That's a long time. And um, she still got her job, a real cushiony job here. And she was saying, as I'm watching her, and I can't believe it, that the First Lady's coming here and she's praising uh, the Falwell uh, is one of his sons that's heads up, helps head up Liberty University, Jerry Falwell's sons. And she's saying how important it is to this area that uh, they're having this panel discussion that the First Lady's on about opioid, um, uh, how much it's hurting and all that. Uh, one of their own people here was shot by a program shooter, just one that I know out of all this mess that goes years back that happened. Um, the young girl that was shot right when she was filming a few years ago, uh, and the cameraman was shot and killed, but she was, uh, going to marry Hurst, who ran later, he was a, uh, announcer, and you you think he's a pretty good fellow. Uh, he ran for a delegate here in Virginia. And I thought, he's going to tell about the mind control murders and that's been going on the Virginia Tech. They all know. This is the oddity in it all. The media have known about my kidnapping, about what's been done to me and my children, my country. They know about the mind control murders. Uh, <clears throat> and I was told, let me inject this, I was actually at a food place trying to get some f food. And I go, I would go there every month. I was just barely getting by. I was eating eating beans, bento beans, uh, cooked in a slow cooker, and that's what I had for a meal for a long time. Except I did have bacon and eggs for breakfast, which I didn't need the salt, but that's beside the point. So he walks up to me. Well, actually, he was standing, got behind me, and he told me that he said Channel Seven is his wife worked there. Is a uh, she's a reporter, because he said that they would send them out on certain <clears throat> jobs, and that was it, and they were never going to cover me and what I was telling. So, <clears throat> even one of their own was shot and killed, two of them, and that's the only one that I'm aware of. But they know it. All of them know it. And for her to sit there, and I'm going to be honest with you, it was so inflammatory, I forgot the rest of her sentence. <clears throat> what she said about, to, um, because that was so important, the opioid uh, epidemic, epidemic, I can't even talk if you knew what was going on here. <clears throat> um, I, I can't remember the rest she said because it really, really just rips me apart. Do you not think, girl, what's her name? <laughs> now then, let's see. 
I think her husband is on Channel 7. Might as well. I mean, they've <laughs> ignored and helped what in what's happened to me ongoing. So you think I'm supposed to like them? They're the press that needs locked up. You should lock the Illuminati press, and they are part of it. Lock them up because they're criminals. Now, I can't think of her name. And I've seen her a lot, a lot. And that's the truth. They need to lock them up. If they can't do their job description in to lie, lock them up because they're criminals. I can't I honestly have blanked it out sitting here. It made me so mad what she said. Um, <clears throat> like mind control and the Virginia Tech, even if you didn't care about me and what's happened to me. Uh, this is, you talk about this is, they have the song going now. This is our hometown, uh, Virginia. Um, well, last time I saw Virginia Tech was right next door to you. And that man was programmed to shoot the 32 and kill him. And then to rent shoot himself. But you know all this, Channel 7, WDBJ 7. So do all of you, the networks and all of you. I think it really got me, though, when she was talking about the First Lady, who I like, but it's almost like the rest of what she said is, like, so sick that they can ignore and watch what's happening to me and what I'm telling, not just about my kidnapping, being brought over here at age two, telling about the mind control murders, the Tesla files, uh, <clears throat> And the corruption in the government and the media, obviously. How they sit there in all good conscience and get away with it is beyond me. And, hey, honey, I'd cut it off. They're all like that. There's one person I think's honest, and he's on Channel 10. He's been here for a long time. I'm not going to mention him. But I think he's the honest one that would try to do something. But anyway, I wanted to get back to the one that was killed here. Uh, the the shooter, his name was Williams, and he had worked for Channel 7. For some reason, he changed his name or something. They fired him. <clears throat> it's not just that, the name Williams. Anyway, they know all this. Hearst and she were um, living together, and they were going to be married. Now, he is one that I thought would try to do something and tell about the mind control, because that's what was used on the shooter. And uh, there's a couple others uh, that just happened here. And no, I'm not just making this up. It's Eisenhower next door, and uh, Love It, or Lovell was her name. And that this one, if it played out, the patterns, you that's one that can be proven. But um, Keeper was the girlfriend that helped Eisenhower in killing, stabbing Lovett. Or Lovell, I can't remember her last name. Lovell, I think. And uh, they've been put in jail for life, uh, you might as well say. I mean, they were teenagers going to college, they were. So this was a mind control murder. So if this is all told, and I pray it is, I pray it is has to be told, what are these people on Channel 7, 10, uh, 13, um, out of Lynchburg, by the way, Huntsville, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, Tampa, Florida, all these places going to tell <clears throat> what they're going to say if this is ever forced and told to the world. And I so hope it is. I mean, their hands are dirty. Their hands are not clean. They're just as guilty as anybody else in perpetrating this and letting it go on. Now, I want to get back to Lynchburg University. Somebody said, well, you, well, first of all, when I was out at Flint's in that political campaign in fall of 83, when one of the doctors, Congressman Larry McDonald, uh, yes, Congressman and doctor from Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta, uh, when his plane was, the plane he was on, the KAL, was shot down August 31st of 83, I was flown out Mr. Flint's in that campaign. That special election is how I got in it, and I've been almost killed and everything. I'm leaving that out. <clears throat> I was doing a book on mind control. And uh, 
Anyway, Mr. Flint, I was out there twice during the campaign in October of 83. And he, um, oh, if I can think right now, I have been smashed. It's, it's the way the crime against me has been committed. It's not like just taking you out and raping you once with 20 people watching and cheering. It's been an ongoing right in front of everybody. Just because they didn't take a knife and stab me to death, it's more unconventional and where people really show their true feelings. And they really hate me. I'm British. Well, to hell with my mom being Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, married to King Edward VIII. And he was taken down because he's a good guy and wouldn't go along with signing treaties and taking orders from the Illuminati, Rockefellers, Rothschild, Bilderbergers. I've been telling you about the United Nations sitting up there as a front global government that's the end times i didn't know that until some time back that i was they helped kidnap me and bring me over here so nobody cares about my father being taken down yet they can run channel 10 and i think some of channel 7 over to Meghan markle and uh, oh she's an american and she's biracial and by the way i have nothing against her but they couldn't wait to go over there. What do you think this is going to look like if this is ever shown? That you got the Queen of England, and I am the legitimate queen. My father made um, proper arrangements, legal. He didn't mean to leave. He was taken out with character assassination. Joe Kennedy was made ambassador to England in '36 by a Jew. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who was so into the United Nations, and Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife, the bloody bunch of crooks and killers. And now then, I'm just going to get back to this. They took my father out, and Wallace Simpson married a double, an imposter. And yes, um, George the Sixth was installed by the mafia. He helped take out my father, his brother, and kidnap me when I was born in '39. Kidnap me in '41, bring me to Moulton, Alabama, and give me the name of a twin. Both twins were killed by their mother. It's a name I still have to use. Peggy Ann Dempsey. I married Childers. My real name is Victoria the Second Queen. Legal. What do you think? If this is ever shown, and it's been a terror my whole life and my children, if this is ever shown, me walking like Anastasia was really Anastasia up in Charlottesville. She was murdered. And I was given doc, court documents from Charlottesville court by the young, well, he wasn't young then, the man who was their handyman uh, in Scottsville outside uh, Charlottesville. Anastasia lived there. She was murdered the day that I drove Hustler Magazine. They furnished me uh, a car for a year, and I never talked to them again, <clears throat> except when they did the endorsement. There was someone called me. <clears throat> anyway, May the 4th of 84, I was driving through Charlottesville, listening to the timing when she died. She was murdered, and I've put all of this up. Anyway, um, now that I'm going to lose my train of thought where I was going. Oh, the handyman, I was on the street. This is some years back. And I'd gone through a lot and ended up down here in this area here in Salem, uh, Roanoke. But I was up in Charlottesville. It was like Christmas and had no place to stay. It was freezing. I was sitting on the back steps of Salvation Army. And uh, someone... It was the handyman that walked up. He had, he, okay, look at this, this thick, all right? They were heavy, that thick. Court papers from Charlottesville. And somebody will say, well, why didn't you keep them? Why didn't I this and why didn't I that? I did. I took them when I didn't have money and Xeroxed them and mailed them and personally handed them to Channel 10, Channel 7. I don't know if I personally handed them to Lynchburg, but uh, probably. I'm walking, I could walk there and backpack, sleep on the Appalachian Trail, you name it, tough it, you ain't seen nothing yet, yet I'm thought of as a tramp and a whore, I guess, I put it like it is, which none of them are true, I'm a lady, and that's what the Brits said in Charlottesville, came in when I was working at Nick's, a restaurant there near the university, uh, there, uh, 
little fellow, I always remember him. It was the family that came in there. And uh, I started, I took the order, and I started to turn around, and the, he was about four years old, but they put him in a high chair. And they told him to say it, I know. And as I started to turn, he said, you're our lady, you know. And I started crying. You know, I'm going to say it like it is. There's some good people here, and there's a hell of a lot of bastards in this country that did this, like putting a woman on a pool table and 18 uh, people watched different men rape her. You don't know nothing yet. You got the Falwell sitting over there, and they tried to say, people will tell me, that Larry Flint, <clears throat> after they sued him in court, federal court up here <clears throat> in Roanoke for the parody, he showed me that parody when I was out there where it was going, uh, back then it was called the Galley Proof. And uh, he showed it to me, and I thought, why is he showing me this parody of the toilet? Oh, God. Now then, people, if you're watching me, follow the toilet there, and you won't get the real gist of it, but you'll get part of it, that what I just said was going on. <laughs> I hadn't connected that till now. I mean, I would have, but anyway, don't give all the secrets away, because just maybe, and by the grace of God, I'll make it. Anyway, after the parody came out, after I, these years and I was up here, the parody had come out right after I left out at Flint's. I've forgotten what month, but he showed it to me. It was about the toilet and all that. <clears throat> it was on the front cover. So that would have, well, anyway, that would have been, I can't, I, I don't know, right at the moment. <clears throat> This will probably go off, and it'll sound... Well, you can put it together. Really, you can. There are people that do. People that say they don't. Hey, lady, you're a nut. No, I'm not. I should have been. All that's been bashed and bruised and taken, I should have been. But I ain't, darlings. Now, back to the parody. That was at Jerry Falwell. I have come up here, and I don't have a car anymore. And I'm living on the Appalachian Trail, freezing, starving. And um, Larry Flint, somebody came up there and got me from Albuquerque, of all places. <clears throat> Man did. He was supposed to, a young fella, well, 20s, I guess, I can't remember, said he was told to come up and get me up at the sh hiker's shelter <clears throat> of Mountain Pass Road and Travel. That's Roanoke, not too far away. I'm living up there freezing. He comes up there and helps me down with, my backpack and a few things I had. I tried to stay warm. In the movie of Larry Flint versus, what was the name of the movie? The United States of um, <clears throat> Freedom of Speech, which I've never really had. I've been allowed to put up on uh, YouTube and Facebook, but man, it, <laughs> you'd have to follow me. Uh, it would be funny if this had been made, and I didn't know it. I don't know. It's probably not, but reality <clears throat> program where you'd find what people are like when you're they're their real self. You're talking to them, and they think nobody else, you know, to hell with me. I, so I'm the Queen of England. Hey, so your mom's Claudia Ruth O'Keefe, sister to Georgia O'Keefe, the artist, American. Hey, you know, I could say, and then somebody say, oh, you use that kind of language. Oh, dears, you have crushed me and my children uh, and my mom and dad in my country every day. <clears throat> so don't tell me squat. And you've gotten wealthy out of it, off of it. You eat, you give it to other countries what you deprived me of. And you better believe my money came in here to keep me alive and my children as bad as what you did to us. Now, if this is still going... Uh, Mr. Flint was sued by Jerry Falwell. I had come here 